Hey friends and family, co-workers, colleagues, um, coming to you live tonight with a little Christmas makeup tutorial. And I didn't really plan on this except for about an hour ago. So we're gonna kind of wing it and I'm gonna get started right away with foundation. This is my foundation palette. Um, as a pro makeup artist, I have to have um, all of these available to me. But most people can wear Hi Kathy, uh, Shinto One, a little bit of that with a little bit of ivory. And if you're lighter, you may need mostly ivory with a little bit of Shinto. And I like for you to have the ability to customize those colors. Sometimes you want a lighter look for daytime. Sometimes you want a little tanner look if you've recently got a spray tan. So it's great if your makeup is flexible and you don't feel like you have to go out and buy a new color. So I'm going to do half my face so you can see the coverage that this foundation offers. This is a wax-based, botan botanical wax-based foundation. This is not a powder or a liquid. Kind of feels more like a cream. You can see that coverage there is pretty exceptional. And we can keep going over it. This is the number five buffer brush, which we are sold out of right now, but it will be coming back in stock in February. All right, so you can clearly see the coverage. And if you're wondering what this feels like, and you're a skeptic like me and you must be thinking, oh my God, I'm sure that feels like a candle on her face with this wax foundation. It really isn't. This stuff has been used um, for a very long time. It's made by RCMA. It's used by every celebrity. Uh, Kim Kardashian's makeup artists use this on everyone. Um, I only throw her name out there because she's popular in the makeup world for how-tos and people you know, wanting to know what it is that she's wearing. But um, pretty much anyone you see on the news, um, anyone on TV at all is wearing this foundation because it's just what all professional makeup artists use. Not all of them, most of them. Okay, so it is available now to normal people like you, but sold through people like me so we can show you how to use it because this is not your typical foundation brush. Um, and it does take a little bit of finesse and it does have to be set with a setting powder. So it just takes a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how to use it um, without hating it. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the other side now, just going in circles. If you have texture in your skin, you can go in opposite circles, so one direction and then the other direction and it will fill in the pores. There are, there are no tricks. I'm not doing anything magical um, to make you see things <laughs> differently than they're actually happening. So I don't, I don't even have the skill to do that. And we'll do a little forehead. Again, I really love the, op the option of having um, both foundations so I can make my skin look a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. Little areas you don't want to forget are the little crease right here on the side of your nose. Very important to pay attention to that. Everyone else sees it, but you really don't when you look in the mirror. And if you have nostrils or this little part of the nose that hangs down, you want to make sure you get a little bit of that so it's not glaring red because the more even the rest of your face is, the more obvious little red parts will stand out and become a little bit distracting to other people when you really just want them to kind of look into your eyes and rest there. So, hi Jamie. Um, thank you for your um, kind words and for tuning in. Um, hi Laura, hi Charlotte. I heard you had a killer event today, girl. So happy for you. Um, okay, so concealer. This is number zero. That wasn't a very good, sorry. Yeah, well, sorry. It's just a light. It's the lightest one we have. 
when you put it on your face, just like when you see me put it on my face here in a minute, you're going to think, oh my gosh, that's way too light. I've made a horrible mistake. This can't be real. But it is. Watch. Look at that pigment. Magic. Um, of course, scary if you don't know what's going to happen here in a second. So I'm going to gently, low pressure, um, blend this in right over my bottom lashes all the way down to the nostril, okay? It should be very light all the way down to here. And then it is also an eye primer. So I'm just gonna go right over the eyelids. And any leftovers go right down the center of the nose, thinning out the nose. Any leftovers from there can go on the chin and the cupid's bow. Highlighting those is always a little makeup artist secret okay now this is all completely mobile it will shift and change I can change the color I can add um, make the shade darker I can make the shade lighter um, by just adding more makeup on top of it because it's all very very blendable in a way that you've probably never experienced before it's it's probably will kind of blow your mind how how it all blends just like seeing that white stripe from here to here suddenly turn into what looks like just a highlight so that blendability is not something that's available on the regular market um, now I'm going to use my tapered face brush and go into my setting powder which is this bright white powder but it's really just translucent I'm gonna go under my eyes and down my face just a light brushing of powder if you're oily you can do two or three coats of powder just to protect your face throughout the day. But this is gonna make you waterproof, cryproof, sweatproof. Um, and I know that sounds a little bit unbelievable, but if you think about it, these are all really professional um, makeup artist products. And that's what the expectation is when you're working on a film set um, or on a theater stage or um, with, with a wedding or something like that and the makeup is expected to last for eight hours or more without going anywhere so um, it's been around those secrets have been around for a long time um, but they're just now available through limelight to the public so that's kind of not kind of exciting it's really exciting okay tapered face brush perfect bronzer we only have one color of bronzer because it's perfect for everyone and that's gonna give me some color back in my face. You can call this contouring if you want, but contouring is really a little bit more specific and requires a little bit more finesse. Really, I'm just kind of slapping color on the side of my face and trying to avoid the front plane of my face. I'm gonna do the side of my nose so it's not reflecting light, but absorbing light. And then the tip. All right, now we don't have moon face. Now the face has some structure. You've given a shadow here where there would naturally be a shadow if your cheekbones stuck out really high like we all want them to. So you're creating that illusion. And then we're going to do a little bit of blush, cheesy grin. I've been answering the question a lot from people with rosacea, like why would I want to put blush on my cheeks when I already have red cheeks? Well, the answer is... First of all, when you're using this foundation, you won't have red cheeks anymore. They will be completely gone and completely covered. Um, where was I? The other reason is that you want to pick the shade of blush or color that is coming from your cheeks, not what um, Eve gave us because she sinned. <laughs> That's what rosacea is. The color of Eve's sin. I swear we wouldn't have that if she had just denied that tree. Um, anyway, this blush in particular that I used has a sheen to it. So you can see when I'm moving and when I'm talking that it's throwing off light from the apex of the corners of my cheeks. And that means that 
I look animated and lively and a point of light will find another point of light. So your eyes will find light when there is light. It's a little science nerdy, but it's true. And because your eyes are round and the brightest point on your face is your um, eyeball, the cheeks help find the eyes. It's kind of sounds a little hokey, but it's totally legit. Um, okay, let's get down to some fun eye makeup here. Now our face is set. I'm going to do my eyebrows with our number 40 eyeshadow, which is also great for a crease color. You can see how dark that goes on. I mean, that was barely one little swipe of color. Um, like I'm just tapping like that and that's how much color I'm getting. So this stuff can be dangerous. You want to be careful. Charlotte, you're sweet. Thank you so much. Hi, Erica. All right. Tiny bit more in the corner here to make it match the other. Always so much easier to match the dark one to the other one than to try to match the dark one to the light or try to match the light one to the dark one than to try to match the dark one to the light one. Just add more. Okay. So we have brows and now I'm going to try something that I probably should have tried before I went live with this, <laughs> but what the heck, we're just going to go for it. I am looking for this baby right here. Y'all see me use this all the time. This is just um, a liner smudge brush. I call it a precision brush because it doesn't have a lot of play. There's, um, It stays nice and tight, so it's not gonna throw makeup all over your face. Um, and I'm going to use gold tonight. This is the Lottie Dream On palette. And I'm gonna use this one, and then I'm gonna use the Dazzle palette, which is crazy. And this is a gold, but it's like a bright yellow gold, and I'm gonna mix those, but I'm gonna get them wet and see if I can get some like really serious gold glittery eyes going. So, hey, Robin, I am really hoping to see you um, Tuesday. Let me know if Tuesday works. Y'all, Robin is, the coolest, sweetest new friend. And she has the most beautiful horses. And she ropes like a cowboy ropes. Like, she can do it for real. Um, missing my spray. Okay, so we're going to get started. Here we go. I am going to use... Hmm. Let's just go for the gold right on the over the lid. I'm just going to cover the whole my whole lid. Precision brush. That was a crappy brush. Look at the difference between that one and this one. I don't know why I picked that one up. You see that? That's called packing and we're packing color on into a small area instead of sweeping it on with a big fluffy brush. We're packing it on. May not even need that lick, um, that spray to keep to make it look brighter. It's pretty flipping bright. Okay, I'm just following the shape of my eyeball and going a little bit past the crease. The crease is right here, and I just extended a tiny bit beyond that. Packing, small sections, whoa, oh, sorry, shirt got stuck on my vanity. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. All right. And you can do this with just about any color. This is really the place that you want to keep fun colors. If you get some kind of fun, funky color, you're like, well, what in the world am I going to do with that? I really want to wear it, but 
just not sure how to pull it off. The safest thing you can do is just to keep it as close to the lash line as possible. When it starts floating up this way, that's when people start going, oh, hey there, what's going on with your face? Hi, Lisa Standifer Brown. I sure do miss you and your gorgeous voice and your sweet smile, your cute family. Okay, and I miss seeing you at um, Laura Johnson's. I was hoping to see you there. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you. I hope you are feeling awesome. Now I'm going to take some of this crazy bright gold and just go over it and see if I can make it a little bit brighter because this is holiday makeup, like Christmas party glam. So the brighter stuff we want to keep in the corner. You can see the difference between this kind of brownish gold and the yellow gold. So I'm going to try to keep that yellow in the center. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you for dinner tonight, my love. It was awesome, as usual. Um, okay, now we are going back to our black. I'm doing things in a little bit of a backwards order tonight than I usually do. I'm going to use number nine black. It's just a flat black eyeshadow with my really sharp eyeliner brush. And I'm gonna give myself some eyeliner. I'm grounding my hand on my chin to make sure it stays steady. Pack it right above the lash line. Pat and pull away. Just get the color on there nice and dark. Don't worry about how smooth it is or, or how even it is because we're going to fix that. We just want the color on there nice and strong and in the exact area in the right placement. Okay. Now you can take your brush without any product on it and go and soften that and kind of blend it in to the other colors that are there. So we're just kind of going over the top where it starts to connect, where the black starts to connect with the gold. I had a little hole there where some gold was peeking through, so I did put a, just a little bit more black there. Okay, we're going to do that on the other eye. It's so much easier if your hand is grounded against your chest and you come in at your face like this as opposed to what I see people do and I have no idea why, but I guess it's just a habit of coming in and trying to use your arm while it's kind of floating above you and coming at it like this. Not going to end up with the best result. I'm going to go straight in here and do my little one-eyed trick. And I'm using a lot of feel. Like I can feel where my lashes are even more than I can see what I'm doing. And so I'm making sure that the brush is actually feeling my lashes or moving my lashes so that I can feel them. <sighs> um, and that's how I know I'm in the right spot. And I have some transfer to the bottom, which if I didn't want that there, I could just take my finger and wipe it right off and it should just come right off. But I am actually gonna go ahead and fill that in. This is called filling in the water line. This is what a smoky eye is all about. It does not make your eyes look smaller. It makes your eye socket look smaller. It makes your eye lid look smaller. It makes your eye membrane look smaller. But it does not make your eyeball look smaller. It puts focus on your iris and makes them look more intense. 
Okay, so I'm gonna clean that off on my shirt because I don't have a towel. Alright, softening here. Softening here. Okay, now we're gonna go in with a medium brown and do a crease color. So this is your transition color between the fun and the brow. That's incredible. Wow, I don't feel like I'm doing makeup tri tricks, Jamie. Just blending some eyeshadow. <laughs> I get such a kick out of those of you that think this is like magic. I'm like, really? You can probably add numbers, <laughs> which I can't do. I think that's magic. It's all relative, right? Okay. So now I'm going to go in with this lovely pineapple of my eye. It's a kind of a barely yellow color. It's very much a nude, but it has just this tiny gold tinge to it. And so I am really loving it for like out, uh, or sorry, not outdoor, but nighttime looks right below the brow. It has a teeny bit of sheen to it, so it's not gonna make you look like you're, you know, beauty pageant crazy with the brow bone that can bring in planes. And under my eyes, I feel like that black is a little bit stark for the gold, so I'm gonna take this brush, Lord. Um, and I'm gonna bring a little bit of the gold underneath and soften the black. And I'm gonna use, I think the darker gold for that. A little bit of that got in my eye. It's okay. It won't stay there forever. It's kind of furthering that smudge look, but it's also softening kind of the whole look. So I've got a little bit of fallout going on here. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And my foundation brush is your best friend for that. Or your concealer brush. There we go. Fallout released. Okay, and now I want to show y'all a little trick that I guess that we consider this sort of advanced um, makeup, but I think I think you're ready for this. Okay, with the black, tiny drop. Hi, Pam. <laughs> Jamie, I can't ever remember a time that I thought that you needed any makeup. Um, all right, here we go. So I'm going to make a connection between my lash and my crease, a little black line right here. And I'm not gonna go any further this way than that line. So I'm kind of setting a boundary for myself I'm going to start working inward to create a dark corner. So I didn't add any product. I'm just taking what I put here and pushing it this way. This is what's possible with really blendable cosmetics. You probably would have a difficult time getting this. I'm going to add a little bit more out of just your everyday cosmetics, perhaps even your Mac or some of those. All right, and this is gonna pull your eye out lengthwise and make it look a little bit more elongated. All of makeup is just a trick of the eye, trompe l'oeil, as they call it in Paris, which I will be going to if I make director this month. Did I tell you all that? I went a trip to Paris. Okay, I think I went a little higher on this one than I did the other one. So, 
and a little further. So I got two options. I can make this one match this one, but I kind of like this one better. So I'm going to show you how to clean this up. I keep my, this is why you need the entire brush set. Okay. This is why this is absolutely what should be on your Christmas list is this brush set. Um, my concealer brush I keep on hand with, it's always got some concealer in it so I can use it to clean up. I'm just going to pull this back a little bit and push this back in. That almost did it right there. I'm cleaning it off in between so that I'm not transferring black. I'm just pushing it down. That is a little bit closer and then from here I can just take this one and smudge it out a little bit more so they match. Okay. So we've got some gold and black eyeballs going and all we need now are false lashes and mascara. But y'all know that I suck at putting on false lashes in this kind of mirror situation. So I'm just going to do mascara, but I am going to show you how to do it correctly. You want to sit back in your chair, wherever you are. Sorry about the little stain on my shirt. Pretty sure I got that at Vanessa's house. Um, sit back in your chair, put a hand mirror in your hand. It doesn't have to be this size. Um, and you want to start at the base and wiggle out. I kind of roll my eyes up a little bit, pressing my lashes onto the brush so that I can get as much firm contact without making swipes and sweeps because that's where mistakes happen. So I wiggle it a little bit back and forth. And then I'm going to touch up the ends and separate a little bit. We don't want any families. We want to be a home wrecker. Divide any little families. All right. Now the other side, you have to use the other hand. I know it sounds terrible. Hi, Elise. I'm so glad you were able to check in. Hi, Debbie. Always so faithful, Debbie. I'm pretty sure you don't need to watch any of this, but I'm sure glad that you're here. Okay. So sit back, relax, take the tension out of your shoulders. Forgive me for not having my hair colored. Good Lord almighty. I've got to get to Austin. Okay. Start at the base and wiggle up. Okay. Then go to the middle, start at the base, wiggle up. Tra trying to make little motions like this back and forth transferring the product from the brush onto the lashes. You want to keep your arms against your side nice and tight so that you have ultimate control over the wand. Don't have your elbow up here swiping at your lashes. And once it's all layered on there, you want to go over the ends, separate the families, Okay, and now let me show you a little trick with the bottom lashes. Take your eyeliner brush, pull some mascara off of the brush, localize it on the wand so that you know exactly where it is, and then just sweep over these bottom lashes. But that big fat wand is just far too intense for those little baby bottom lashes. You can get away with it a few times and then you'll think, oh, I got this. And then that one time that you're in a big hurry and you don't have any time to fix it is going to be the time that you end up with black all underneath your eyes because you didn't listen to me. So it's worth it to take the time in the beginning so that you don't have to spend more time fixing it in the end. Um, okay, one other thing before we get to lips, because lips are very important for holiday parties, but so is shimmer. Um, I am going to use our number six blush, which is 
uh, lovingly referred to as our Oprah blush. And this is, has a little bit of sheen to it. Well, it's not a lot of sheen. I mean, this is not strobe light stuff. This is just everyday like, oh, you're glowing like you're fresh out of the womb. And that's gonna go right here. I mean, really, it could just go everywhere. But this is the most popular place to put it. It's going to diffuse light, so it's going to distract from fine lines. Makeup, by nature, is always going to enhance fine lines, always. You can't get rid of wrinkles with makeup. You can get rid of wrinkle. well, you can diminish wrinkles with good skincare, which we have, um, and which I've done tremendously over the last couple of months. Um, but all you can do with makeup is divert people's eyes away from the things that you tend to stare at in the mirror. So if you've got crow's feet right here, a little bit of shimmer right here is going to bounce a point of light, which is going to send people's eyes back to your eyeball, which diverts the attention away from what's going on underneath. I know that sounds like hocus pocus, but I'm telling you, it is the secret of Hollywood. Go right down the center of the nose, forehead, right here. It's great if these little things stick up, makes you look, I don't know, prettier somehow. Okay. And now onto lips. Nude lip liner is all you'll ever need. You don't need colored lip liners. And we're gonna go a little um, on the outside of the vermilion border. The vermilion border is that little fat part of your lip, like where you can see where it's no longer pink, it's kind of white, and then it dips back and it becomes your face. We wanna be on the far side of that, almost on the face. I feel there is so much I need to have and know. There is Jessica Jones, and do you know what? If you will teach me how to shod my horses, I will teach you everything you need to know about makeup. I might even give you a free mascara. Don't count your peacocks. I'm cracking myself up tonight, y'all. Are y'all laughing as hard as I am? I mean, it doesn't look like because I can't do that while I'm putting on lipstick, but I'm <laughs> inside, I'm really laughing. All right, so. Now we have a nice waxy border and sort of a fake lip line. So we've kind of faked it a little bit and given ourselves just, or myself, just a little bit more than um, what I started out with. Okay. <laughs> Vanessa likes my comment. Vanessa's going to come with me. We're going to learn how to shoe horses. How much fun would that be, Vanessa, if that's what we did on like weekday mornings is just go around shoeing people's horses. That would be awesome. Think of all the free horses we could get. We could tell people there's something wrong with their horse and they should just give it to us because you know, we have a we have a horse that needs a buddy. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna use my lip liner um, brush because this is for a Christmas party that I'm not really going to. And so we need to, um, <laughs> if I'm going to teach you to shoe horse, Hey, I'm a really fast learner. It should take like 20 minutes to teach me. Um, if we're going to a Christmas party, it needs to be done right. So we're going to use our brush because it's always, always going to look better and last longer when you do it with a brush. All right. This is where you want to take some time not to be rushed. And if I was a makeup artist, I'd be telling me to shut up right now. If you have some silly idea that you can't wear red lipstick, you're wrong. It may not be the best color on you. I don't think it's necessarily the best color on me. I don't think gold and black is the best color on my eyes. But it's so much fun to rock it and wear it and know that you have options.
I totally cheated my lips here. I mean, I'm just way outside the line now, and I don't even care. Because when you wear a dark matte color, you can break the rules. When you're wearing a shimmer color, it's going to highlight every little curve, um, and there's a lot less forgiveness there. I'm going to use my makeup remover wipes and just wipe my brush off. Also, these red lips totally do not match what I'm wearing right now, so that's kind of jacking with me a little bit. But I'm going to pretend like I'm wearing a sparkly sequin gold dress, that my roots are beautifully platinum blonde, and that my hair is some kind of something like this. And then I have on some really fancy earrings, and I'm going to a Christmas party. And every time I get blush on, I mean lipstick on like this, I always feel like I need more blush. So I'm going to go back in. I'm actually going to use red blush. I'm not going to use it at full strength, but I'm going to give a little dab and just bring a little bit of redness, which is now a little bit too much, but never fear. Let's take our foundation brush and it's going to blend right in. Maybe a little too much <laughs> but hey what the hell right you never know perfect until you reach disaster I certainly wouldn't call this disaster but it's probably a little too red anyway there we go we are magical and I'm only lacking in the putting shoes on art oh putting shoes on art yes that is not the only skill in which you're lacking but that's a can't think of any right now, but it's not too red, Elise. I mean, Elise is a makeup artist. She would know. I feel like it looks a little too red, um, but she would know. So, and when I move, I mean, it's true. You can't judge yourself like this because nobody else sees you like that. You should judge yourself by kind of moving around and looking in the mirror as if you're talking to somebody and looking into your own eyes. That's how you see what everybody else sees. But if you do this and you look at something on your face, whatever's in focus will expand and then you get a falsified idea of what you really look like and what everybody else is seeing. So there's your uh, physics lesson for today. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Elise says it looks like a natural flush. So done. And I appreciate you guys joining. Hi, Megan. You're just joining in at the tail end, but I hope that you'll go back and watch because I was really funny tonight. Um, and yeah, Jessica, that's how everybody judges themselves. We all look at something on our face. We never look into our own eyes. So I would encourage you when you look in the mirror, keep yourself at an arm's length distance and look into your own eyes and let the rest of your face come into focus. Um, you'll be much happier with what you see. So I hope you guys have um, an amazing week. I am going to be getting up early and going to boot camp because I am down eight pounds in, I guess it's, uh, today's two weeks. So I feel like that's a pretty healthy um, amount of weight loss and I am pretty proud of that. So I'm going to keep going strong. Thank you for all of your support. I'm drinking plenty of water and I'm definitely taking in plenty of calories, so no worries there. Um, and I'm just feeling better every day. So it's kind of exciting. I look forward to this Christmas feeling awesome about being out and about among friends instead of um, hiding at home. So I hope y'all have a great week and I will see you very soon with more on makeup. Ciao.